I want to ask you about your weakness because you said that it was perfectionism and a dodgy attitude to the rest that means that you regularly find yourself burnt out. And I would imagine that a lot of people listening to this podcast can absolutely relate to this idea that you've got to be perfect. And I don't think we're, we expect that of any group of people more than mothers. Yeah. I think the idea that you've got to be absolutely perfect, can't put a foot wrong, and your child also has to behave completely perfectly <laughs> and have all the right things. <sighs> that is such a huge pressure. So how have you been able to, have you been able to release yourself uh, from a perfectionist mindset? Yeah, con constantly having to do so, to be honest. Um, do you know what I think? Recognizing that the world is incredibly imperfect. And if I'm trying to replicate some kind of perfection then I'm not actually preparing my children very well to mm -hmm. navigate the world um supporting them through disappointment and seeing and the repair that comes when I've shouted or I've parented in a way that I'm not proud of and I can find ways to explain to them that sometimes we're just tired and grumpy and you know we don't say nice things and I'm really sorry and I love you and I think that's been really helpful and not beating myself up yeah. when it goes awry and not choosing not to kind of let that guilt turn into shame because I think sometimes we go from I've done a bad thing that wasn't ideal to I am a bad person, I don't deserve my kids or I don't deserve the love that comes from them and then we can find ourselves kind of defending ourselves against against love and connection. And so when I feel guilty now, I just think, well, there's a prompt to have me look at what went on and what might I do what do I need do I actually just need to go for a walk or, or rant to a friend and focusing on the repair more than trying to be right all the time because yeah. that's just not realistic or sustainable and will find us in burnout and being cross with ourselves mm. and my kids don't need that either do you now can you now spot burnout before it happens I'm not very good at that, to be honest. <laughs> My therapist often says, you know, it's funny, Anna, because suddenly uh, you're you're here again. And I just, <laughs> you know what? I just love, I love my job. I love it. I love, you know, I've got a really full and fast life and it's fun. It's hard. And I think I have to really make space for rest. I went through a burnout a couple of years ago that I've never experienced anything like it. It was really visceral. It was like a full nervous system burnout after the pandemic and it really scared me because it made me realize how you know we're not just ahead doing all the things dragging our body along you know we are a full body in person and we need we need to be respecting you know all the different facets of ourselves and we need to rest it's mm. it's a human requirement it's not an indulgence it's yeah if we want to do good things we need to rest as well um we need to put in what we're putting out and that was yeah it's very humbling that experience really made me start respecting my body and my nervous system and what I'm asking of it and what I'm giving it in return it's that thing isn't it of um you can go through a burnout or anything a few times and then there'll be a time where you think oh no I, next time I even smell that yes. in the distance or see the shape of it coming I will know that that means an emergency stop it's not just about oh I will make time when it's it's no we're stopping now yeah yeah and I don't want to I don't want to get to that place again so I think I just for me it's my my mom or a friend texts me and I feel like that's an inconvenience I'm like oh it's just another thing to do you know when maintaining relationships that are really important to me a few text messages or you know when that feels too much that's a that's a real flag mm yeah you're just making me chuckle because at the end of last year I was just every time my email went or anything I'd just be like yeah at my computer much. just telling it to f off or just swearing at inanimate objects yeah. because yeah I just need I had allowed myself to get too yeah. far down that road it was making me chuckle right um let is let's talk about because this really feeds into it actually I asked you about a time when you were wrong and you said when you thought you could do it all over and over and over again inevitably that would lead to burnout so how did you realize you couldn't do it all how did you make peace with that yeah and what strategies have you put in place so that you're 
cup is full but doesn't runneth over. Yeah. <laughs> so it was actually that burnout and we were meant to go away for our first break after the pandemic when you could and we were going to my husband's kind of family home in Wales and I was just I was in such a way that even thinking of packing was would send me into a state of panic and tears and my husband couldn't even broach what time shall we leave. <laughs> um, because I would start crying. So on the day it came to pack, he took the kids out. And I remember sitting on the floor in the kitchen with a water bottle in a jute bag, crying because I could not even face, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I literally couldn't do it. I couldn't even face the thought of being in a car with five of us and the kids. And, you know, it was, I, I didn't have it in the tank and I felt so painfully guilty. And I called my mum crying and she said, Anna, what if you just don't go? And suddenly I felt this massive just release and relief and guilt of I can't. Mm. And that means no one can really. Um, that means it's not happening and that's really sad. And I felt this massive guilt and I suddenly thought, wait a minute, this has come because I have been the cost in this pandemic you know my resources have been it's great just trying to keep everything going and everyone together so you know if I if I put a, a holiday on a credit card as a family credit card that would be our debt to pay mm. you know that would be if we were to go away and enjoy that holiday we would then have to repay that debt that debt we benefited from that debt we need to repay it and I thought my burnout is basically the debt so therefore that and I have spent myself on the collective I've had to, and therefore we need to repay that debt as a family. The cost is the family cost, and and it really helped me, I think, recognise that my burnout is not just my burnout, it's everyone's, mm. like it affects everyone. So therefore I need to recruit my family so that I can get the things that I need so that I can give them what they need. Mm. So the kids will see me working out, the kids will have me saying, wait a minute, no, I'm just resting on the sofa five minutes. I'll do that in five minutes. Or my husband, you know, can you take over because I just need a breather? You know, so I ask for help now because I know that they need me to ask for help. Mm. And I don't feel like I'm burdening people because I know what the real cost in the end of mm. not doing that is, is that I can't help anyone. And then things really do <laughs> fall apart a bit. It's such an incredible journey because even at the beginning of this podcast, we talked about how the fear of saying what you need or actually not even having the skills to know how to articulate what you need because it was something that you hadn't done before. Coming all the way to the end of this conversation, you not only know how to express yourself, but you know when is appropriate and you also know the impact it has on the people around you. Yeah. It sounds as though, it feels as though it's been a real gift, not just for you, but for your life and your family too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think these things often can be the messiest bits. 